This week on the Computer Chronicles, speech technology. We'll show you the newest speech recognition hardware that lets you use your computer without a keyboard. We'll see the latest in mobile speech technology, a digital recorder that can turn your dictation into text files, and computers that can understand speech well enough to train you in a foreign language, plus Webly, a voice-activated virtual assistant that can possibly replace your secretary. And my pick of the week, speech software that turns your PC into a lie detector. It's all coming up next on The Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com, with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb, for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Shafe. Well, if you've called information lately on the telephone, you may have noticed that a computer is actually listening to your request for a phone number. And of course, the computer is using speech recognition technology to hopefully understand you. Ever since HAL and the movie 2001, we've had this dream of having computers we could talk to. Well, the dream may finally be coming true. We're going to start our look at the state of the art in speech technology with a brand new approach from Philips. And welcome, Rick. And uh, you guys are not uh, just doing the typical speech recognition software. You've actually created a, a special piece of hardware uh, to do this with. Why don't you explain what this thing is, Rick? Stuart, what this is is a speech mic pro. What we've done is we've incorporated the mouse device, a microphone. So it's a little trackball right. with the clickers. Exactly. That's the mic. Correct. On top. Little speaker. Speaker on the bottom. And what are these little buttons here? We have also control keys that allows the user to pause their audio their files. Exactly. Record, uh, play that back. Uh huh. Because uh, typically, when one's recording, they're they're pausing to collect their thoughts before they continue on. Okay. And it avoids them having to to move that trackball, click pause, move the trackball, click record. Yeah. Now, is this designed, I assume, to make it easier so the stuff works accurately? Because one of the things we hear with all the speech software, well, you need the perfect kind of mic at the right distance from your mouth yeah, and all exactly. that stuff. Well, it's not only designed to make the system operate uh, more easily, but it's also designed to make it more comfortable for the user. All right, the theory is that I could use this little device as my total interface in a way. I mean, I can mouse around, I can talk, I can do everything. That's correct, but it also, think of it more, Stuart, as something that augments your existing keyboard. So this is not going to replace my keyboard? No, your keyboard okay. stays, and your mouse may stay as well, because you may use draw programs. All right, why don't, why don't we see how to actually use this thing? Why don't okay. you take over here Great. and show me how I would use the speech mic to actually do something with my right. PC. Let's do that. What I'm running here, Stuart, is our speech recognition program, which we call Free Speech. Okay. And it allows me to accomplish two things. One is command and control, mm -hmm. so I can navigate around. So you can open PC. up things, open applications, move around. Precisely. All right. As well as speech recognition, where I may want to go into email or a text processing. Okay, so let's do number one first and just open an app right. and just show me how I'd navigate using it. Let's that. try, say, PowerPoint. Open PowerPoint. Open PowerPoint. Let's try Start PowerPoint. Cancel, file, open, cancel. All right, so the normal things we might be doing with a mouse and That's right. clicking and pointing, we can say do it. That's right. And realize also I can use this device to navigate around from a distance. In other words, I can be standing up okay. or a couple of feet away from my PC as I'm navigating through that application. So, as well. I mean, all else fails, you got the trackball there, right? You got it. Exactly. Click. All right, now what about the dictation part? I mean, that's the key to this, right? I mean, what I, what I really want is to get away from the darn keyboard and be able right. to talk to the computer and have it understand right. me. Well, let me uh, take care of the memo that I wanted to write you after, <laughs> all uh, after right. the show. Start Word. Dear Stuart, comma, paragraph. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your show and demonstrate free speech and speech mic, period, paragraph. On your next trip to Atlanta, comma, please stop by Phillips uh, to see more new products, period, paragraph. Best regards, comma, paragraph, Rick Gallahan. Paragraph, P.S., thanks for the autographed picture, exclamation mark. <laughs> well, that's pretty good so far. I mean, you're perfect up to now. Thanks for the first trip by Phillips. I mean, no, no mistakes of any sort. 
Should I do it again? Maybe I'll do it. <laughs> no, you know, you used to saying this stuff, so it might be so good normally. Well, the system also understands my voice. I've okay, been you've trained it for a while. Exactly. Okay, and exactly. how much time does it take for it to train a system? I spent you? about 45 minutes just allowing it to learn the acoustic of my voice, mm -hmm. but I've also given it some Word documents that I've typed in the past. And that's key, because now it understands the, it knows the way kind of I words use words. you use and the way you, you emphasize That's right. Last question. Uh, I love this stuff. I think this is really cool. But when you sit here and you think, well, you know, I could just as well have typed this thing. Uh, et cetera. What's the future of this? I mean, why do we care about the speech? Stuart, I think it's not uh, an application that will replace typing on the mm -hmm. keyboard, nor will it, as I said before, replace the mouse. It really augments the existing application. Another way to do something exactly. in a certain environment. It may yeah. take me 20 minutes to get a email or a document just right to you uh -huh. if I keyboard it. I guarantee I can probably do it in two minutes if I just speak my sure way Sure is fun, it. that's for sure. Rick, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, one of the limitations on speech recognition technology in the past has been you generally have to be there at your desk with your computer turned on to use this stuff. But often it's when we're traveling out in the field that we'd like to just dictate something and then have it show up later as a text file on our PC. Well, you can now do that with a new generation of mobile speech recognition devices. And this is what you guys at Dragon are up to now. Okay. Uh, what is that little goodie you got right there? This is the Dragon Naturally mobile recorder. It's a digital audio recorder. Okay, and what capacity, how much can I put in there? You can store 40 minutes of audio out of uh -huh. the box. It'll also take flash memory cards and can store unlimited amounts. You can swap in and out the cards. All right, so the theory is I'm on a trip somewhere, I'm on a plane, I'm at an airport somewhere, I can dictate into this thing. Then when I get back to the office, plug it into my computer, and it'll transcribe the speech into text. Sure. Absolutely. Hey, show us. All right. So here. So you're on you're on the plane right now. You're flying somewhere. Yep. Okay. So turn it on, and I'm going to record a memo for a sales meeting. Okay. Sales meeting memo. New paragraph. I would like to schedule a sales meeting for February 3rd. Period. Please inform my office regarding your travel arrangements as soon as possible, period. Okay, so the audio has been recorded. All right, so you've recorded your little memo, you're in the car, you're in the plane, right. you get back to the office, and now okay. what do we do? Okay. We, we download it to the PC. Right, absolutely. You plug it into the serial port. Okay. And I take it the recognition hasn't happened yet. That's going right. to happen during this absolutely. process. Yeah, the, only the audio has been stored in okay, the Okay, so right now it's just a digital tape recorder. Yeah. So clicking here causes the software to link up with the recorder, mm -hmm. and the directory has been updated. And this is the file that we've just created. Um, and now, selecting that file and clicking here will cause the actual audio data to be downloaded. Okay, so you're dumping the file you just dictated into the machine, and it's in real time doing the recognition. There we see it. Right. And so you can record multiple files mm -hmm. uh, up to 120 minutes at a time. And it's just going ahead, cranking away there, uh, interpreting what you spoke. And we're doing pretty good. I'd like to schedule a sales meeting February 3rd. Can you say that? No mistakes yet. Right. Okay. All right. So that's a um, demonstration of how the. All right. Now works. I've got a computer right. file and I can send it as an email, to print it out as a yeah. memo, do whatever I want. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, all right. You have other things you can do with this, which is what would you call what? Naturally organized. Right. Dragon naturally organized is a um, beta right now, but you should be able to purchase this very shortly, and it can actually control your personal information manager. All right, so I'm not only going to record a memo in here, I'm going to record instructions for my computer to do something when I get back? Yes. All right, Absolutely. show me that. Okay. So I'm going to record two um, action items for, um, in this case, ACT. Okay, so you're going to send this to the software ACT. Right. So here, let me do a tap. Schedule a meeting with Michelle Stern for Thursday at 3 p.m. for 30 minutes regarding the sales meeting. Send an email to Andrew McDonald regarding the sales figures, period. New paragraph. Andrew, comma, new paragraph. Please review the attached document for accuracy, period. Computer, please attach draft document. All right, so again, you come back to the office, and now you've said not only did I create something, but do something with it right. on my computer. Absolutely. So in, we are going to download the data. Okay, so this, this part is just what we did before then, right? Right. It's going to copy the file. Here it is, downloading the data. 
So same principle, it, it's copying the text, but some of this text is going to have command information in it. Yes, yeah. And the command information depends on what personal information manager you use. So you can schedule emails, do right. uh, meetings, you can schedule um, calls, update contact lists, all those various things that you can do okay. with your information. Now I take it, I could have just played back the audio and listened to my memo also. Yeah. I mean, it's a normal tape recorder in right. that sense. absolutely. Okay, so it's almost finished doing that. We start to see in the background some of the stuff it transcribed there. So let's see, I move that. Okay, so that was your meeting with Michelle Stern on January 14, and again, it's accurate. Right. And it's still working on the second one. You it know, is. Huh? It's just downloading it, and as soon as it's done, there, there we go. It is. So to, okay, now what is now? Show us how this works. How does it talk to Act and do something now? Okay, so right now these are um, up on the screen as needing approval. Good. We so, need so to red means Act do you want me to really do this? Right. Okay. Exactly. In case I made a mistake. And we will approve that one. And I don't want to send that one to Act. So okay. we'll disapprove that one. We'll send to Act, and it's done, just like that. So it's now, now on your calendar. It's now on my calendar. Let's see. So here it is. There, there it is. is. There's a meeting. Right. That's very cool. Thanks All a right. lot. All right. Well, you might think that voice technology applications are trivial. What's the big deal? It's just as easy to type as to speak. There are some specialized work environments in which the ability to communicate with a machine using only your voice can be critical. Left. Move up. Down. Dr. Marriott Stockery is a surgeon at the San Ramon Medical Center near San Francisco. She specializes in advanced laparoscopic surgery. Dr. Stockery uses an endoscope and video camera controlled by a robot to operate remotely through a small incision. She can control the robot's movements by voice commands after training the system to recognize her. Hermes, Aesop. Well, the first innovation was to have a robotic arm in order uh, to hold the laparoscope, control the camera, and therefore the surgeon was back in control of the view. Initially that was using a foot pedal, and now it's progressed to using uh, a voice card so it's voice activated. So the surgeon directs the commands, and the field of view is immediately where the surgeon wants it to be, back to what it was when we did surgeries we were trained to do it. During the operation, a control system called Hermes and a robot called Aesop work side by side with the surgical team. Dr. Astakri can move the endoscopic camera within a patient's abdomen by issuing simple commands to Aesop. She can also control the light source and other complex devices with her voice. Laparoscopic surgery is very technology dependent, so there's a lot of equipment involving uh, insufflation of gas, uh, the light source attached to the camera, the light level, uh, the view of the field, taking pictures, and you became dependent on a person not in the field being able to turn on the equipment, turn it off, make adjustments for you. Again, instead of with open surgery, just being able to reach up, adjust the light, change the view for yourself. So this brought us back in to have control of those systems. Aesop and Hermes were developed by Computer Motion, a medical robotics company in California. Their latest system, Zeus, was recently used in the world's first robotically controlled heart bypass surgery. By now, the voice-controlled robots have proven themselves to be reliable and able assistants. I think it has facilitated um, advancement to more technically difficult surgeries. For example, when we do more advanced laparoscopic surgeries, uh, like colon resections, Usually that surgery and open surgery would involve two surgeons using both their hands working together in order to do the operation. Well, if one of those surgeons is holding the camera, his or her hand is tied up, not doing anything usable. When we have the uh, robotic arm to hold the camera, now you're back to your normal situation, two surgeons working two-handed as a team. While Aesop and Hermes are now trusted tools of the operating room, there was some anxiety among the surgical staff about their safety at first. Well, we definitely had concerns because now uh, there is a, a device that's moving a camera in and out, a laparoscope. Well, that could impale or move into normal tissue, so there's a concern about injury. Um, so there were issues about that. And would it make it longer? You're adding another piece of technology. Could it actually make the operation take longer if you're adding more complexity to it? In fact, once we learned and became comfortable with it, we found it saved time, and the safety issues uh, were not a concern. It's very safe. Laparoscopic surgery is minimally invasive, an advantage to the patient, but it requires the doctor to work remotely. 
Today, with a video camera and voice-controlled equipment, the process feels normal and natural. It, it just it added an additional feature to it of how the camera is controlled, and now it is very much second nature to us. I can't imagine being without these pieces of equipment now. It would be like taking a step backwards. Hermes, controls, controls, timer, stop. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. If we can get computers to understand what we say, they can take on a whole new role in education and helping us to learn. And one obvious area where that would be true is in foreign language training. And I guess, Bradley, that's the idea with Oralog. In the past, there's been some very cool foreign language software, but you couldn't talk to it. You couldn't do the real thing you want to do is have a conversation. Exactly. I take it you can now do that using speech recognition in your Tell Me More software. Exactly. And our product is based on just that. It's based on and built around speech recognition. So right. that allows you to actually have an interactive dialogue with your computer. So basically the computer can understand me and correct me, if you will, or tell me I'm not pronouncing things right and saying things right. Exactly. Let's take a look at that. Okay, first of all, I know there's an option screen in here. If you can show us that first, we can sort of set up how critical you want the teacher to be. Exactly. So we can go into the option screen, as you were saying, and we have several choices. Um, lower right, the audio, um, the the uh, speed at which the, okay. the I guess speaker. the key one is that acceptance level, like how, how critical do you want to be of how well I pronounce things? And exactly. Say things? So you're sort of in the middle range right exactly. now. Exactly. So again, we have a variety of, of uh, choices. Here we have the acceptance level that you're talking about. Yeah. So as a beginner, I'll set it a little bit lower. I'm okay. going to set it on four today. Fair enough. And then as you get better, you'll want to up. actually right, move so it up. So let's go into the dialogue part of this and show me how I actually have a conversation in Italian, presumably. We're looking at the Italian version of this That's with, correct. The, with the software. That's correct. I brought Italian today. I thought it might be uh, kind of fun for us. Okay. So to begin with, we'll go to, to the wardrobe section. As you can see, the, the uh, main menu is set up on a... Is uh, it a particular lesson you're loading in? Is that correct. It? Okay. The main screen is the studio. All right. So I'll go here to the upper left-hand side of the screen. I'll pick the easiest lesson to begin with. Now, do you know Italian, actually? I have never spoke a word of so Italian you're in my here. life. Okay. I'm learning here just like you are. <laughs> Let's see I usually here. demo the Spanish version, okay. but I uh, decided to have a little change of pace today. So initially, we'll go here to the dialogue, to uh -huh. the clap, clap man. <clears throat> so the computer will actually begin to prompt us or ask it's us It's going to ask you a question. Correct. And so as it does, we'll have a choice of three responses. Uh -huh. All of those responses will be correct. But you have to pronounce them right so it can understand. Hey, yeah. Bono sera. So green means it was happy to say. Exactly. Sono un fantasma. So as I said, you have a choice of three different answers, and depending on how you respond, mm -hmm. that will dictate the course of the conversation. Out of the conversation. Exactly. Okay. So there, you have. But you an do have to pronounce it correctly. Correct. All right. So we'll uh, we'll try one here where I won't. E come ti chiami? Lo mi chiamo Marco. You well, did recognize me. Okay, you had <laughs> that easy acceptance level. So right. let's let's go really here. Really mess this one up. Stia bene uh, uh, grazi. Let's see. No way. Didn't understand me. So I'm going to double click on that Stop and I'm going to actually to. practice that. And let me stop it here for a second as I was talking. So I wasn't able to pronounce uh -huh. that. So I, I double clicked on it. Here we have the sentence. Sto bene, grazie. So that's really cool. So that's a picture of actually what the sound correctly pronounced Sto looks bene, like. Sto bene, grazie. And now you can say the same thing? That's correct. The model will speak and actually show us on the screen a, a graph right, go, of that you do model. It, you do it. Sto bene, grazie. Sto bene, grazie. Sounded good to me. Sto bene, grazie. Sto bene, grazie. Sto bene, grazie. Sto bene, grazie. Okay. Okay. And it's sort Sto of rating bene, you grazie. on the bottom right of the Sto screen here. It's grazie. kind of giving you a score as to how well you did. Exactly. Exactly. So I did pretty well on that one. Now, Sto bene, grazie. let me try one. Sto uh, bene, uh, Grazi. Sto bene, grazie. Doesn't yeah. look the same. <laughs> yeah. So this is almost better than a teacher in a way because with the computer you can exactly. actually see what your voice sounds you like. You can see what your voice sounds like and you can repeat it over and over again. And the best part of it all is you don't have other people around watching really, you and making fun of you and being One embarrassed. One quick other thing I want you to show me. There's a part where you can actually learn and have to identify what's in a picture by pronouncing it. 
which seems to me is, the, is a real way to learn this Sure, thing. sure. Now, I might that? add just real quick, yeah. um, if, if you are stuck on a particular word, if, if we have the time well, we here, can work on a piece you can of it. actually work on a pizza. Pizza. Yeah. Oh, we Good don't. See. So, so okay. run real quick to that picture word okay. for me. So I'm going to go back to the main menu, okay. and we have a, a video comprehension mode, and then what you're talking about, excuse me, clicked on the wrong thing, mm -hmm. for the exercises. So there's a variety of, of exercises that you can do, and this one uh, is based on... All right, so what is that? You have to say the right word in Italian for a sweater, I presume, or whatever. Um, magli maglione. maglione. Yeah, you didn't make it. Well, we're going to have to let you practice on your own. i got to move along. Thanks okay. a lot, Bradley. Thank you very All much. All right. One of the ultimate goals of those people working in speech recognition technology is the development of virtual assistants, computerized secretaries, if you will, who can take spoken commands from you and actually follow up. And there actually is such technology available now, right? And, Hal, I guess Webly is your approach to doing that. Explain the concept. What exactly is Webly? Webly is your personal assistant with English manners. Got an actually accent. manages all your communications, all your incoming calls. He answers them and screens them for you. Manages, you places all your outbound calls just by spoken word. Um, it has a, a voice mailbox, a fax mailbox, and basically manages all your messages in one place for you. All right, so you. if I sign up for the Webley service, I have this guy out in cyberspace somewhere who's managing my email and my voicemail and my faxes, can forward my telephone for me, all that Correct. kind of stuff. Correct. Show me how you do it. You're Accessible you're by the phone and by the web. Okay, so let's say you're out in the field right now, you're waiting in an airport yep. somewhere, you pick up your phone and you want to call Webley to do something. I call my own Webley number. And get I'm going to turn this on so we can hear the other end. Okay. Thank you for calling Webley Systems. Anytime during... Webley. Say your full name or touch tone your extension. Hal Poole. I heard Hal Poole. Touch tone or say your four-digit security code. 5745. Five. Is that your PIN number? Your Welcome. Number? You have 37 messages, 17 saved messages, and 29 faxes. Your incoming calls will be transferred to your mobile down. phone okay, number. So what would you like to do? Email, voicemail, waiting for you. What are my options? Say, listen to messages, make a call, transfer my calls, start following me, leave a message, send message, broadcast message, check my email, check my faxes, set my personal options, access saved what messages, restore deleted messages. Check my email. One moment, please. It gives you all the prompts, just in yeah. case you forget all the things that you're supposed it's to do. It's going to log messages. on to my email. Your right. own email, not the Webley email. Message one is and seven kilobytes from Bradley B. Subject regarding additional questions. That's the header of the email. January one ninety seven eighteen thirty six. You can listen and Pacific skip time. the headers or mm -hmm. read the content. Next message. Say, next message. Read message. Next message. Message two is one kilobyte. This is the it's test I left Friday, for you. We'll read the content. January 1457 Central Time from Halpole Organization Webley Systems. Subject test. Read the content. What now? Read the content. This is a test, just a test. <laughs> what now? So that was Webley. an email you had sent me and it's reading it. Yeah. What would you like to do? Goodbye. Goodbye. He's got very good manners, too. <laughs> All right, very cool. So, so he was, and I was very quick, accessing my email, accessing my voicemail, telling me about faxes. Now, I understand there's a web part of this, too. If I went to a browser somewhere, or something, wherever I happen to be, I can access the same information through the web browser? Absolutely. You get your own personal web page that allows you to change where your calls are forwarded to. It allows you to download from any PIN all of your contact information so you don't have to enter it all and back into the right. system again. So, yeah, let's shut the so if I have Palm Pilot, for example, yeah. I have all my contact names and numbers, I can download them to the Webley site. Right. And instantly you'll be able to speed dial all of them just by name. Call Stuart. All right, so if I were on the phone with Webley and I would say, call Hal, that's all I have to do. I don't have to open up the pilot, look up the number, no. dial it, blah, blah, blah. No. It accesses it on its own. Looks up the number, automatically outdials it. Sounds pretty good. Right. Now, what can I do here on the website? So, so uh, Webley was reading to me my email. Correct. Now, I can actually access my voicemail on the website, so right. total opposite. When I go back to my office, I just go into this, pick up my voicemail, and while I'm sitting around doing some paperwork, 
what's happening is that real audio off the internet, free of charge, uh -huh. free of charge in terms of telephony. So it's streaming your voice now. Voice now test for the Computer Chronicles. What do you think, Stuart? Pretty good is what I think. Exactly. So if you're in a hotel, rather than accessing via calling card, you just get up on the net and then pull all your voicemails yeah. down. Now, on the voice part of this, it's sort of limited vocabulary, so I mean, it seems pretty easy. I mean, it doesn't make mistakes. No, it's natural speech. It understands plus minus what you're trying to say, and mm -hmm. very accurate these days. And w what does it cost to have the Webley working for you? The basic system's about $10, running up to about 14 and then Per month? The, per month yeah. for, for the service, and then 14.9 cents, call 15 cents a minute, for accessing your voicemails by the phone, and that also includes the long distance. So it's a so toll-free call also. Very reasonable compared to calling And Webley works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Takes no vacations. <laughs> All right, Dal, thank you very much. Well, that's our look at speech technology. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week. Now for my pick of the week. So far, we've looked at speech recognition in a rather limited way. Can the computer understand the words we speak? But it's no secret that people don't always speak the truth. So in addition to simply understanding what you say, could a computer be trained to evaluate the truth of what you say? Well, according to an Israeli software company called Machshevet, it can, with a new computer program called Truster. This is essentially a piece of software which turns your PC into a lie detector. The software can work with a microphone. You can just plug this into your PC, or it can analyze telephone conversations using this telephone adapter. As someone speaks into the computer, the software gives you real-time analysis of the truth or falsity of the statements being made. The software analyzes several variables in your speech, measuring subtle variations in the sound waves being generated by your vocal cords. If you're lying, the tension in your vocal cords can be detected by the algorithms in the software. The program measures overall truthfulness, giving you various outputs, conclusive analysis in words, blinking lights, red means a lie, green the truth, and you can do a deeper analysis by looking at the various components of your voice that the software is measuring. Doubt, tension, global stress, and excitement level. You can then pull up a report on the speech analysis, and Truster gives you a summary of the truthfulness of a person's statement. There's always going to be a debate about polygraphs and whether or not they're reliable, but this is one very interesting, low-cost way for you to find out for yourself. The program is called Truster, and it sells for about $100. That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back here again next week with more of the latest in software, hardware, and the Internet. Hope we'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWiz for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, Showcase 99. We'll show you the future of digital television, a set-top box that records your favorite shows on a hard drive. This is Enhanced TV, computer files fed to your PC through the television signal. And meet the new Internet where you can access your applications from your ISP, plus new graphics software that lets you turn flat images into 3D, and a new kind of solitaire, the future of workplace training. Showcase 99 next week on the Computer Chronicles.